Welcome back to the Movie Academy. Today I'll show you a British biography. Comedy and drama film from 2015 called The Lady in the Van, literally. That's all about the unique friendship between a homeless elderly and a lonely writer. That is a mostly true story in Camden Town, London. In 1970, let's dive in. Alan Bennett is a London playwright and actor. He is a closeted homosexual with few friends. He closes to his mother. Descending into senility and physical debilitation, as he likes to talk with himself. There are two versions of Bennett. One is his living self. One is his writer self. Miss Mary Shepherd is a crabby, eccentric, unsanitary homeless elderly living in a filthy van. She isn't a beggar but is a self-employed who sells pencils on the street. She is a Catholic and often goes to church and confess. When she emerges, those who encounter her are taken aback by her smell. Bennett moves into a new house in Camden Town. Miss Shepard needs a push for the van and asks him for help. That is the first time they meet each other. Rufus and Paulin, who are Bennett's neighbors living opposite, greet him and tell him that Miss Shepard stayed in Gloucester Avenue last year and now moves to Camden Town. One of the neighbors, Mrs. Vaughn Williams, suggests Bennett writes about Shepard, since he has been writing about his mother as a script for a long time. He thinks about writing something new, so he takes her advice and writes down what he observes from Shepard. Miss Shepard firstly moves in front of Fiona's house. Fiona wants to do a bit for the homeless. She tries to share the pairs with her and be friendly with her. Fiona's daughter plays a soprano recorder. Her son plays the cello. Shepard moves off since her daughter is doing her O-level and making non-stop music. Hats. The neighbor discovers that Shepard is so irritated by music that she is willing to move her van to escape it. Then, Shepard drives her van towards Rufus and Paulin's house and park her van there. Rufus and Paulin run back and ask her to leave. Shepard refuses to move away and argues that this is Christian parking and she follows the guideline of the Virgin Mary. They have to attend the opera in a rush, so they temporarily stop arguing with her, but they are using the parking restriction against Shepard's stay later on. When Shepard happily paints the van in yellow with a pan scrub, an official posts a removal order on the van windscreen. Meanwhile, the council workers are painting yellow lines. That means there are parking restrictions in Camden Town. Shepard will be illegally parked, and she has to drive somewhere else. Lady Wigan, a Catholic lady, buys Shepard a newer model of Bedford van. Bennett asks her to let her park the van outside her house, but she rejects it. The town neighbors pretend to be kind and offer their bits of help to Shepard. They discuss Shepard at a dinner party when Bennett is away. They blame Bennett as a fool to be kind to her. They don't want her to live near their house and want to kick her out. On the other hand, Shepard always asks for Bennett's help as she thinks he is the one who genuinely helps and listens to her. She can use Bennett's lavatory if an emergency. Although Bennett feels reluctant, he lets her use it. After her usage, he scrubs out of the bathroom. However, he shops with her and buys her groceries. A social worker Lois regularly visits Shepard and brings her what she needs. The neighbor told Lois that Bennett was Shepard's pal and even described her as his girlfriend. He is shocked about what they said. Besides, Lois asks Bennett to give her squad a right cause he lets her use his lavatory. One day, Bennett surprisingly found that Shepard is a musician who can speak French fluently except an ambulance driver in war and a nun. At night, retired police Underwood gives the van a tremendous bang. Bennett spots that and repels him. Then, Underwood lingers and taps lightly on the van twice. Shepard gives him 40 pounds notes in total. The following morning, two young men get on either side of the van, shaking it and shouting at her. Bennett comes out, drive them off and make sure she is okay. Afterwards, Bennett decides to take care of her, provides her with a temporary shelter and allows her to park her Bedford van in the driveway of his Camden home for three months. She ended up residing there for 15 years. During her 15-year stay in his driveway, Bennett balances his writing career with watching over Shepard and providing for his increasingly invalid mother. Although he denies caring for anyone, he slowly becomes aware of his growing friendship with Shepard. One day, Shepard gets ill and Bennett sends her to a day center. Before she goes to a day center, she gives her brother's contact information to Bennett. Then, Bennett arrives at her brother, Mr. Fairchild's house. Her brother tells him that Shepard was an ambulance driver and became a nun twice. Shepard was. In fact, Margaret Fairchild, a former gifted pupil of virtuoso pianist Alfred Cordot, she played Chopin in a concert. Afterwards, she tried to become a nun until they got rid of her. Because Shepard is a complicated woman and his wife doesn't want to live with her, he puts her away and sends her to Bansett Asylum. Regarding the conflict between her obsession with music and devotion to God, she prays instead of practicing the piano. The day after going to Day Center, she dies peacefully in her sleep in her van, in Shepard's funeral ceremony. Retired police, Underwood, tells Bennett that she was on the run. In 1960, Shepard was driving a Bedford van on the country lane. She stopped at a junction. Suddenly, 
The motorbike slammed into her van. The young biker's face smashes into her van windscreen. The young biker is dead on the road. She thought that she had killed him. Underwood clarifies that a young biker came round a corner too fast and smashed into her van. That wasn't her fault indeed. There was only a dead boy on the road. As she thought that she was a killer, she quickly drove off. She didn't even call the police or flag down a following motorist. Thereby, she put herself on the wrong side of the law. Underwood attempted to chase her on that day, but she escaped from his catch. However, Underwood never told the truth to Shepard. That is the reason why Underwood keeps blackmailing Shepard. Shepard believed herself to blame and lived in fear of arrest. Then, she changed her name to avoid detection. All of her weird behavior comes from that accident. In the end, Bennett reveals her true identity and her past. He decides to write a memoir covering the years he has known her. In 2014, the real Alan Bennett rode down the road and watched the file crew filming the final scene. The actor who acts himself unveiled a blue plaque on his home dedicated to the lady in the van. What do you think of this film? Leave the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification, so you won't miss out on any incredible movie spoilers. See you in the next video.